Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden and today's video is Earth and Sky number 14. As you can see, I uh, just grabbed, um, I grabbed some collage papers that I've been working on with my large canvas work, which it will be in an, uh, in an upcoming video. Uh, and of course, all sorts of blues. So I just used the scraps of the larger pieces and brought some more selections over just to make sure I had enough um, variety. Variety in size, black and white, which is value, and in the different blues. Uh, some of them are images of my own paintings. And uh, yes, I'm showing you that that piece was made from a brer. And uh, some interesting stuff in the mail, foam, cylinders, which were easy to cut up and make great stamping uh, for open circle shapes because they're not perfect. So I decided to start the substrate to activate it just with a pencil. And as you can see today, I'm trying the white acid-free masking tape uh, for, my, uh, for my framing so the page stays nice and clean. It's great visually, but in the end, you'll see that it did lift some of the paper. It didn't release so easily compared to the Green Frog Tape brand. So then I'm uh, pushing back that layer of graphite with a thin uh, braired layer of white um, acrylic paint. And then again, here's the Titan Buff. And when I'm doing this, I'm just... I guess because I start raw. I don't I don't plan anything when I sit and do these videos for you. Uh, trying to emulate uh, just as as you would. Um, so then I just react uh, to different things that are going on, trying to be very present in the moment. So this is an ochre and I was recalling uh, this one turns out very different. At first I was thinking the very horizontal shapes, but this one doesn't turn out anything like it. It's more vertical. Why? I have no idea. It just happens. So that is a, a, a colored image of a painting of a, of a lily series that uh, I really do need to get back to. And I absolutely love the colors in this. Of course, Back in the day, I used to take my paintings too far and I lost it. Thank goodness I have uh, records, uh, visual records of your work. It's so important to take records of your work. So then now I'm noticing, well, I didn't tear many pieces of this. I just sort of was overlaying squares, probably because my other painting, I just left it and it was just full of different squares, different sizes. And I'm using my absolutely favorite blue, which is the Teal by Golden, which is it, is, it is a fluid paint, fluid acrylic. And then using that palette knife, trying to just make just intuitive marks, um, not planned brush strokes. And then of course I go over that later on and of course, again, when you use the brayer, it does help it dry more quickly. I don't use a hair dryer or I haven't needed a hair dryer during my, um, my process. I probably will in the future if I want to, if I want to speed up things, but I usually work, uh, on more than one piece. And while you're working on that one, it gets you out of that frame of mind and then you can learn something new and you take it back to the other one while it's been drying. So this is a uh, really nice neutral. Uh, I have all sorts of pieces. This is from a, a scrapbooking pad with nothing but the brown paper with white marks, white patterns and black patterns. And um, so it looks like I'm thinking more diagonally and vertically in this one. That is a piece of map and I flipped it over and noticed it said Ontario so I thought oh yeah so 
I thought oh, I'd keep that. As in other videos, sometimes the other side is more interesting than, than the one you first choose. And that piece that I just showed you there was also made from a, a brayer, but on a jelly plate. And then the paper is, uh, is uh, pressed and it's amazing what you can reveal. So those are my white paint on black acrylic painted um, letters, stenciling. And I really need to get some larger ones because you really have to keep scale in mind, especially when you want to apply it to larger canvases. It works fine on this eight by 10. <clears throat> and then of course my series of dots. I just chose one strip this time. I was going to do a three by three grid thinking now maybe, but you know, these things just, I'm reacting, not planning. And I think previously that all, uh, most of my, uh, pages, my earth and sky pages were horizontal. I just wanted to do something different. So just pushing back the layer with another layer of dots. They're, they turn out really organic when you use your finger. That's that beautiful old turquoise. And uh, so planning, I'm noticing too. So each layer then pushes back the previous layer. So learning to not obliterate uh, a layer that you don't like lesson learned in my large canvas, which I will be discussing. And uh, uh, I haven't recorded myself creating that one, just the different stages of it. But uh, who knows how I'll, how I'll do that. I'll be doing more. This is handmade paper um, with, par with fibers in it. It is so fabulous. And uh, you can get darker ones, like a, sort of like a coffee color. It's a beautiful neutral. And when you tear them, the edges are very frayed. So then I'm just sort of thinking of, okay, what's my next move? What do I want to do? And that little, that little, uh, you'll see what shows up that in the, the last, there it is. Uh, the last video or the, the one before when I was trying to I think it was Earth and Sky 13 12 or 13 I kept putting in the the square of sky well it finally found a place in Earth and Sky number 14 I don't know if it exactly fits but I put it there anyway I guess I I had enough of trying to find a spot for it so just applying marks with the oil pastels uh, why red is that I chose the just bringing out a little bit of the color that's sitting in that in that tall rectangle rectangular shape. I don't know if I like it. It doesn't matter. It's good. So I'm just getting rid of uh, too many exact squares. So I'm just pushing that back into the background pushing the white away and then I realized, no, the white was a little better. So I just warmed it up a bit. You can wipe it off. There's another piece. And I'm noticing that high contrast. Yes, the square didn't work, so I needed a, a, a different shape. But it needs to go on the other side, as you can see, for the balance of this piece. That does not work. And boom, right away it finds its place, right there. Because you have all the black on the one side and this counteracts the balance. Yes, and that it's a circle, not a square. It's different. So we're always thinking of differences. And so I'm running, I'm, I realize I'm beginning to run a little low on my collage papers. So I'm going to be starting a new batch this week. And that will be um, um, up for the next video. Um, and it's really interesting how things change. You 
get preferences. You develop preferences the more you do your work. The more you just do pages like this, explore and play, you realize what you like, what you don't like, what works, what doesn't work. So then you start to narrow down the types of marks you want, the types of shapes or patterns. And I'm finally at that point. It's been a long road, but it's been amazing. It's an amazing journey. So then just finishing up, uh, using that stamping because I realized, oh, I didn't use it. So, okay, what can I do? So using that alignment, the cruciform in a way, and then I needed, I was going to put one more. And I thought, no, that would overdo it. So, um, and you'll notice on the upper, sort of on the left-hand side of the pastels, I like to use dried skins from my palette and apply them to my painting. So you'll see it. So stick to the end and you'll see what I do. That is a very large acrylic paint marker. And I really just, I was going to go for another row and I thought, nope, just enough. So you, you spin into your work to react and then you come out and we're at the end. So, uh, and you realize, okay, so you can step back and then go back in again. As you can see, I'm having a bit of trouble with this white paint. Now, mind you, um, it does not stick to watercolor paper, the heavier 90 pound and more watercolor paper. So it's great for that because you don't have the colored paint, a tape um, bothering you, especially if you want to make a six grid. So <clears throat> in the end, it's a little fuzzy on the edge, but it's not bad. So I won't use that again. I will stick to the frog tape, even though I am running low. And as you can see, I'm just adding a little teal to repair that edge, that tore. And um, we are at the end, but just wait for this last little addition to see what I do with this teal. So that was from the glass palette that was overnight. And I just, you know, and it doesn't have to be a circle. It can be any shape. So I decided to leave it right there. So thank you for watching. And uh, this is Michelle Holden, and we will see you in the next video. Uh, especially uh, hit that like button and subscribe if you're liking this content. And uh, that marker was a china marker just to help bring some more marks and dark to the bottom to give it weight. And I hope you enjoyed Earth and Sky number 14. We'll be making more. Stay tuned for the next video for the next set of how you make your own collage papers. And I will see you in the next 